Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Grace. It's so good to be gathered together on this beautiful fall morning as uh, God's grace is brought to our lives today as we gather around God's word and the joy of being at his table today. So welcome, welcome, welcome. We are uh, thankful today to hear from our Grace uh, Bell Choir. Uh, so thank you for sharing your gifts with us this morning. It's great to have uh, that incredible gift of music uh, as a part of our worship today. As we grow God's family closer together in friendship and in faith, note there are some things in your grace notes that to be noted of things that are coming up. Our women's retreat is available. There's a table for you uh, with some information regarding that, October 18th through 20th. Now, there's a grief support group uh, that will begin in November. And, uh, and so we're, we're thankful for this opportunity to gather in the care and support of people that have uh, endured loss of loved ones. And so note that. That's, we're, we're, that's going to be a, an important piece of our um, care for one another. So grief support, check the grace notes for all of that. Uh, men's uh, Bible study will begin... Um, Saturday, this coming Saturday, uh, they're beginning with the Red Letter Challenge, and so check your grace notes for that too. Uh, the material is in. Uh, ask Pastor when you see him; he'd be glad to to get you that book if you want to commit to it. The Red Letter Challenge, uh, an incredible kind of um, discipleship growth piece, right, for us as men to grow in the way that we follow Jesus, and so that's that's the challenge for us. Uh, all of this month, beginning this week, throughout the rest of the month, it's our month at Grace to, to be a part of uh, this community effort of the Samaritan House Pantry. Uh, this is a pantry that provides food for families in need in our local kind of uh, northern Macomb area. And so if you uh, would, please grab one of the uh, tags on the uh, table out there that's uh, in the in the silo area and you can uh, be a part of filling up that pantry just bring the groceries back set them aside you don't have to get everything on the list if you see uh, say like corn on the list you can just fill that whole bag with corn you don't have to get one of each you can just whatever you know just let's just start filling up uh, that pantry with food but they do have some needs listed so be mindful of that and as we share God's life, we're so thankful for the ministry of our preschool and the new offering of toddler time. And so uh, that's for uh, one and a half year olds with their parents up through three years old to gather together with some time, uh, with some organized uh, play and, uh, and the ministry of our preschool into the lives of our families. And so that's there for you. I did want to mention that uh, this coming Saturday, um, we're going to have a memorial service for our dear sister in Christ, Nancy McLeod. Uh, Nancy uh, passed away a, a while back, but we're gathering this coming Saturday at 11 o'clock uh, to give thanks for her life and to have a, of a service uh, of God's comfort for the family and for us along the way. So 11 o'clock Saturday, the memorial service for Nancy McLeod. All right. So the focus of our hearts uh, in this season has, is about what it is to be discipled. What do we learn uh, about what it is to follow Jesus from those who followed him? And, uh, and so we're considering today to follow Jesus is to be blessed, to be blessed in how that works in our life. And so pray God's blessing on our worship and our time together to kind of ready our hearts for that. Uh, the gift of Grace Bell Choir.
You don't have to clap when I come up here. <laughs> Please stand. Let's call our hearts to worship. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have, you have set, set your, your glory above, above the heavens. heavens. From the lips of children and infants, you, you have ordained praise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let's remain standing for our opening song. <laughs> Now we come before our Lord in a time of confession. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made, who made heaven, heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with, but with you, you there is, is forgiveness, forgiveness. Therefore, therefore you are you. feared. Together as God's people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty, Almighty God, God, have mercy upon, upon us. us. Forgive, Forgive our, our sins, sins and, and lead, lead us, us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you and for his sake, forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, I declare with great joy this morning, your sins are forgiven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let's remain standing for our song of praise. Oh. 
sisters. What are, what are they for? Hugging. Hugging. There we go. That, see? Look at that. All right. Okay. You hold on to a pencil. What do you use? What do you do with it? You write. You hold on to a spoon. What do you do with it? Eat what? Peanut butter on a spoon. Ooh. All right. Anything else you eat with a spoon? Cereal. What's cold and creamy? Ice cream. Ice cream. Mm. Got it. Or you can eat with that a fork, too. I've done that before. It, you know, whatever it takes. <laughs> All right. So we have little sisters that we hold on to and hug. We have spoons that we hold on to and eat. We have pencils that we hold on to and write. Let's see. What else can we hold on? How about a stuffed animal? What do you do with that? Snuggle. Hug. That's another hugger. There we go. All right. Now, we're going to hear about, in the Bible today, we're going to see that Jesus is going to hold on to something. And guess what it is? It's a little one like that. All wiggly and squiggly and happy and giggly. And guess what Jesus does holding on to the baby, to the little one? What's he do? What does he do with the little baby? What does he do with the little child? Does he say, shh, be quiet? He says, don't giggle. He says, what do you think he does? He blesses the child to be in the arms of Jesus, to be in his care, is to be blessed. And he loves and blesses each and every one of you. That's what our Jesus does with our life. He says, I give you a blessing to let you know how much I love you and care about you no matter what. All right, now, are you ready to go back to your seats? Yeah. All right, see ya. <laughs> All right, we have some lessons from God's Word to bring to us today, and our reader today is Roger Beecher. The Old Testament reading is from Genesis chapter 2. The Lord God said, It is not good for man to be alone. I will make a helpful, suitable, <clears throat> suitable for him. I will make a helper suitable for him. Now the Lord God had formed out of the ground all the wild animals and all the birds in the sky. He brought them to the man to see what he would name them. And whatever the man called each living creature, that was its name. So the man gave names to all the livestock, the birds in the sky, and all the wild animals. But for Adam, no suitable helper was found. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and then closed up the place with flesh. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib and he had taken out of the man, and he brought her to the man. The man said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she has taken out of man. That is why I, a man leaves his father and his mother and is united to his wife, and they become one flesh. Adam and his wife were both naked, and they felt no shame. The epistle reading comes from Hebrews 
chapter 1 and 2. In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, and through whom also made the universe. The Son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things in his powerful word. After he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven, so that he became as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited as superior to theirs. It is not to angels that he was subjected the world to come about which we are speaking, but there is a place where someone has testified. What is mankind that you are mindful of them? a son of man, that you, could, that you care for him? You made them a little lower than the angels. You crowned them with glory and honor and put everything under their feet. In putting everything under them, God left nothing that is not subject to them. Yet at present, we do not see everything subject to them. But we do see Jesus, who was made lower than the angels for a little while, now crowned with glory and honor, because he suffered death, so that by the grace of God, he might taste death for everyone. In bringing many sons and daughters to glory, it was fitting that God, for whom and through whom everything exists, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through what he suffered, both the one who makes people holy and those who are made holy are of the same family. So Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters. He says, I will declare your name to my brothers and sisters. In the assembly, I will sing your praises. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel, which comes from Mark chapter 10. Some Pharisees came and tested him by asking, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? What did Moses command you, he replied. They said, Moses permitted a man to write a certificate of divorce and send her away. It was because of your hearts that were hardened, Moses wrote you this law. Jesus replied, but at the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. When they were in the house again, the disciples asked Jesus about this. He answered, anyone who divorces his wife and marries another woman commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another man, she commits adultery. People were bringing little children to Jesus for him to place it in his hands on them. But the disciple rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He said to them, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And he took the children in his arms, placed his hands on them, and blessed them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Thanks so much, Roger. You may be seated. Well, it f finally feels a little bit like fall to me. I don't know about you, but I'm loving this season. And also, if you look around, the fall decorations are out. And they come in the most, from the very sublime to the, the scary, right? So we have our fall decorations like we saw on our way in today. The hay bales and the pumpkins and the, 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 the corn stalk and the, the beautiful mums. And then we have the scary decorations. <laughs> we got the ghouls and the spiders and the spider webs and the graveyards. Today, 
as we take a look at the lesson of the gospel, I want to do an object lesson to kind of bring it to bear. And just like the fall objects that we see, there's the sublime ones in this gospel lesson. There's the Jesus with the children. What a beautiful thing. He blesses them. But then we got the scary reality too, right? As Jesus is confronted by the Pharisees at the mention of divorce. So today, three objects. Three object lessons to help us work through the lesson of the gospel for us today. And the first object I want in your mind's eye is a loophole. Got it? A loophole? That's the first object. A loophole. Now the disciples are looking for loopholes. They are trying in the confrontation with Jesus to test him to see if he'll jump through it. And, um, and they bring up divorce. And that's where they're trying to find the loophole and to see what Jesus does with it. Now, what I think is so interesting, and this is important to note, that as the disciples, or the Pharisees, bring up divorce, they are actually so detached from the reality in the real life that divorce impacts. They just want to debate the issue. And they're completely detached. But we can't be, can we? Not with this issue. It's something that has affected so many of our lives. And these are real. Your, your lives are very real. That either divorce has touched you through, that's been a, that's been a reality you've had to manage uh, and, and go through. Or you're a child that has parents that had gotten divorced and you had to figure out all of that in that reality. And so we can't just detach ourselves from the whole issue. But we're not going to just try and find a loophole to get around it. And so they try and engage Jesus in a debate. But instead of engaging in a detached debate of the question, can we get a divorce? Can we do that? Instead of focusing on what we can or cannot do. Jesus instead talks about God's intention for family. What did God intend for family? And the, the reality that was very real, that God intended, we heard in Genesis chapter 2, and Jesus brings that up in the midst of all of this confrontation with this issue. And he, when he talks about God's original intention for family, the one word that he keeps bringing up is oneness. A togetherness. Unity. What a beautiful picture of what family is intended to be. But, Here's what happens. Now, when I Googled the object loophole, I had, you know, something in mind. But do you know a loophole is actually an architectural term? You want to see a loophole when it comes to architecture? This is what it looks like. This is actually a wall, and that, like, little hole in the wall, that's called a loophole. And what do you do with that loophole? You put some kind of something through there to fire at your enemy. You hide behind the wall and you either take a bow and arrow or some kind of a shotgun or a cannon to, to get after your enemy. Isn't that a picture of what, we're fa what Jesus was facing with the Pharisees? They had real no truly concern about those who were in the reality of divorce. They just wanted to hide behind the wall 
and take down their enemy, and that enemy was Jesus. And for some of us, that this issue of divorce that is so very real to you, this is a real issue. We kind of hide behind that wall. Because we feel like the arrows are coming at us. And all that have been at through that. But the grace and love of Jesus is bigger than all of it. You see, what we what the tendency when it comes to this issue of divorce, for what we what we just want to know is God, is this a sin or isn't it? Right? We want to name it a sin and then kind of deal with it. And so is it? Listen, we know that it, it's contrary, divorce is contrary to God's will. We, we know what his intention was. It was a oneness. And when there's a breaking apart of all of what was marriage or family, or, yeah, it hurts. It's sin. But the point isn't whether it's a sin or not. The point for you and for me is can you live with the forgiveness? Can you live with the forgiveness? Because this is what breaks the walls down. So we're either not hiding behind it, or we, like the Pharisees, just you name the issue. We're just going to name the issue. We don't care who it affects or what it's about. We really don't. We just want to get at our enemy. But can we live with the heart of God whose forgiveness is so wide it reaches into every broken corner of our lives? to everything about us. The wrong in our marriages, the wrong in broken marriages, the wrong in my single, for all of us. Can we live with the forgiveness that is bigger than all of it? Because the forgiveness that Christ has for you and for me is way bigger than this issue or that issue. And that forgiveness is for you. We're left wondering in the, this lesson from the gospel kind of what all happens because the narrative changes, as does the object. So here's the next object in our object lesson. <laughs> we go from the Pharisees now to the disciples. And here's what they want to do. They see that there's a waste messing everything up. And they see children as that mess. And they are a big just waste of time for Jesus. And so they get out their broom and they just want to sweep the children away. It feels like there's a lot in my life. I pick up a broom a lot. Now, not like literally. I mean, I don't. I, I should pick up the broom more in our house and help that way. But I feel like, man, don't we, there's, when it comes to so many things in life, maybe even with our own, whatever we're dealing with, whatever kind of feels like it's cluttering or messy or broken or busted up or just there, and we want to get out the broom, sometimes we just want to sweep it aside. Just kind of keep it in a little neat pile, but just get it out of the way. My favorite use for the broom I like to sweep things under the rug. <laughs> I mean, I just want to get, I want to ignore it. I want to just sweep it away, just kind of hide it, don't want to deal with it, right? Just to sweep it under the rug. We have a tendency to do that in life, don't we? Or we just want to pitch everything. And we just want to sweep whatever, collect every kind of thing, it doesn't matter what's getting caught up in there, we're just going to sweep it all up and dump it, get rid of it. And here are the disciples. They're getting out their brooms to sweep away these children. And isn't it interesting? Those in the, that, that are most affected by this issue with the Pharisees, those most impacted by divorce, women and children, these are the people that Jesus enfolds. And the disciples just want to sweep these kids away. But Jesus says, let the little children come 
to me. Put your brooms down and let the little children come to me. Which brings us to the third object in our object lesson. When I think of being a child, childhood, I loved the playground. I loved going to the playground. I loved hanging out there. The part of the playground I loved the most was the swing set, right? The swings. I loved, take, as a dad, I loved taking the kids to the, to the playground and to the swings, right? And so I wanted this, this object of this sense of, of what childhood is. This incredible time where we're just in so many ways carefree because we're in under the care of others. And this is what Jesus wants us to know. That there's this, there's this reality, this blessing that is ours. That is to be in the care of Jesus. Let the little children come to me. Do not hinder For the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. There is the sense of both identity of who we are as the children of God and the sense of belonging, that you belong in the care of Christ. Not because you have something amazing. Listen, children don't have, here's what children bring. They bring a dependency and vulnerability. And everybody that was there that day with Jesus knew that's what children are. They bring a dependency and a vulnerability. That's it. And yet they are so loved and so important in in life, aren't they? And so it is for you as a child of God. This is what we bring. Our dependency. Our need for grace and mercy and hope and peace and love and, and restoration and redemption in a vulnerability. And what's left as we follow Jesus in the care of Christ is to be blessed. To be blessed. So, here's the blessing. To to stop with the loopholes and hide behind issues, detached, and just trying to get at the enemy. Just forgetting that's real people and real issues and real life. And if we've been hurt and broken and we ourselves in the midst of what was called sin and named sin and we see ourselves in that and we're just putting up walls so nobody else can see it, we can let the walls come down because God's grace and mercy is bigger than all of that. We can put away the brooms Rather, let's be swept up in the care of Christ to be enfolded under his loving care and the intention of a life held together, unified, our God and our heart and the blessing that he provides by saying to you, come to me, come to me, follow me, and in my care you will be blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, we're going to stand and say together with our lips the faith that lives in our hearts as we boldly confess the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated as we bring our blessings now before our God in a time of offering.
next time. Let's pray. Lord, we bring to you just a portion of that which you have blessed us with. Would you use our offerings that indeed we at Grace might be a blessing to others as we follow you, that others would know the care that you give and the forgiveness that is found in your care. We want that for our families, for our community, and for our world. In Jesus' name, amen. Some special music, the bell choir.
And now we turn our hearts and minds to uh, God in prayer. Uh, we have some folks that we'll be remembering today. Uh, we'll be remembering the family of Pete Dalton, a friend of Gary's. Uh, Pete passed away last night, so we'll certainly uh, be remembering his family and ask that the Lord would uh, wrap his loving arms around them and let them feel his presence. We're praying for the family of Sue Ann Berman. Uh, we had a memorial service last uh, Thursday for Sue Ann and Warren and the family are here today. So uh, express your condolences and remember them in the days to come with uh, phone calls and prayers. And we pray that God would uh, be with them. <clears throat> We're also praying for our dear Joanne Nedwick. Uh, Joanne had a fall and uh, shattered her elbow, had surgery, and is recovering at home. Uh, so we pray for uh, complete and speedy healing. We're praying for Cal. Uh, Cal is a friend of Brad and Jan Schwartz. Uh, he is going in for some testing, uh, uncertain as to what's going on, but we pray that the Lord would uh, be with him and give him peace and patience and uh, favorable test results. And we're still we're praying for our dear Mike Sylvie. He's with us here this morning and still waiting patiently, or sometimes not patiently, for uh, some test results that uh, have been unconclusive. So uh, we're, we ask that God would be with Mike and Mary both and give them patience in this time of waiting. We're praying for Adam, uh, Molly Maisie's brother. Uh, we're praying that... Uh, they would come up with a correct diagnosis and treatment, uh, uncertain as to what's going on with Adam. Uh, we pray that God would be with him, give him peace and patience, and uh, be with the doctors and nurses as they care for him. And we're also praying for Laura, Nancy Green's sister. Bill and Nancy are here with us today from Tennessee, and uh, her sister Laura is going to be having surgery tomorrow. So we pray that uh, uh, God's hand would be on the with the doctors and nurses and the surgeons and certainly with Laura, to uh, give her uh, complete healing and peace. So with that, let's stand and go to the Lord in prayer. <laughs> Loving Father, your son took little children into his arms and blessed them. Help your saints to welcome little ones with joy that nothing may hinder their entrance into the kingdom of God in the arms of Christ. Gracious Lord, you give us men to guide your church on earth. We ask your blessing for Matthew, our synodical president, Dave, our district president, and Norm, our circuit visitor, and certainly for all pastors together with the many servants and treasures of your church. Lord God, be near all couples struggling in their marriages. Guard them from hardness of heart that would separate what you have joined together and reconcile them to one another to live in Christ's forgiveness and love. Heavenly Father, be near to families torn apart by adultery and divorce. Sustain and heal the wounded with your love. Give repentance and forgiveness to the guilty and hope in your forgiveness. Almighty God, grant your wisdom to all public servants and to those who work to bring peace and justice and health, protection in this and every place, that they may be strengthened and upheld in every good deed. And gracious God, you promise to abide with your people and uphold them in their suffering. Comfort all who are sick and sorrowing, those that we named and those that we now name in our hearts. Strengthen their faith in the midst of their trials and grant them health and healing according to your good and gracious will. And Holy Lord, your Son gives us his very body and blood to eat and drink in the supper. Grant us your grace that we may approach your table with repentant and hearts in a firm resolution to amend our sinful lives by the help of your Holy Spirit. Lord God, help us by your Spirit to fear you and to walk in your ways in Christ, that we may eat the fruit of the labor of our hands and receive your blessing in all that we do. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. And now let's join our hearts together in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And before the blessing, I completely forgot a part of my sermon. So here we go. I'm going to keep preaching. Isn't that? It happens every once in a while. But you were probably wondering, okay, I get the swing and the childhood thing, but what's the point? Well, here it is. It comes from uh, Max Cato, and he gives some devotional thoughts, and he remembers when he was a kid on a swing, right? So remember this moment, right? And here's what he writes. Children love to swing. There's nothing like it. Spinning trees, a stomach that jumps into your throat. Ah, swing. As a child, I trusted certain people to push my swing. They could twist me, turn me, stop me, and the, my favorite, the underdog. I loved it. But let a stranger push my swing, and it was hang on, baby. We live in a world, he says, of strained marriages, broken hearts, lonely evenings. Who is pushing your swing. In the right hands, you can find peace and hope and forgiveness. And dear family, children of God, it is Jesus, our Lord and Christ, who is pushing your swing. Continue to trust in him through it all. Now there's the end of my sermon. Isn't that better? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Pastor Mike is like, what are you doing? I have no clue what's going on right now. Sorry. All right. Let's stand for our closing song. Send forth by God's blessing. thank me because he was going to start from the beginning of his sermon. <laughs> and now let's go from this place uh, with God's blessing. Before that, our deacon Terry Bauer is here. If you would like intercessory prayer, Terry will be available up front here. Uh, he'll pray with you or for you. Uh, so if that's something you would like to do, please come up and see Terry. And now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the union and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Have a great week, everybody.